Hey there, Internets. I'm Michael, and this is To Can Play That Game. So, for this third video, um, I'm not actually getting around to going through any of these games yet. I will make sure that the next video I do is one of these games, and it will be the rules instruction for that game first. Uh, I haven't decided which one, but um, it, that will definitely be my next video. This video, last night I went to a games night and had the opportunity to try some new games, um, so I just thought I would take a few minutes uh, just to give you my thoughts and opinions on them. Please keep in mind this is from like single play or for some of the shorter ones a couple plays, but not enough to give a 100% verdict and obviously I'm not going to go into too much detail about the gameplay and how you actually play. So the first game I played last night was San Juan. Um, if you don't know anything about this, um, it's kind of a successor to Puerto Rico, um, which I didn't enjoy. I didn't enjoy Puerto Rico. I found it too long and too dry for the game it was. Um, obviously, a lot of people very much like those longer Euros. Um, it's not that it's complex and heavy, it's just long uh, and wasn't for me. But, you know, some people prefer those kind of games and if they do, then I hope that they have much fun playing that. So, with San Juan though, it's a very different game. It's a much shorter game, for certain. Um, it's a purely card-driven game. Um, if you've ever played Race for the Galaxy, this is a very similar game to that. Uh, Race for the Galaxy came out after this. It was made by the same people. It's kind of a successor in a way to San Juan. But what they've done when they did Race for the Galaxy was add a lot of complexity to the game. A lot of symbology, etc. That, in my opinion, I found overcomplicated Race for the Galaxy. Not that it was a bad game. I still enjoyed it as a game. Um, I never got round to adding it to my collection, and I probably would have if not for Roll for the Galaxy coming out, which is ten times better than Race for the Galaxy. Um, if I had to choose between San Juan that I played last night and Race for the Galaxy, I would choose San Juan. Um, the, the simplicity of play just made the game work better. It was much quicker. It just flowed much better, and it wasn't confusing, it didn't have that steep learning curve. Out of the three people playing the game, both me and one other person had never played before, and there was very little difficulty in grasping, grasping the concepts of this game and learning to play it. I would say it would definitely, if you had Race for the Galaxy, and you wanted to get new friends or family into that game, works amazingly well to be a kind of intro to that as a stepping stone um, because of the whole role selection and that's the key thing that makes San Juan as a game it's that role selection and hand management because your cards you want to play down to get the victory points and they potentially special powers and producing etc but at the same time you need cards as your currency Cards are what you pay to be able to build other cards. And that's the same for race. And so this does lend itself well as a learning tool for Race for the Galaxy. So with regards to can two people play San Juan? Yes, they can. Definitely two can play San Juan. But at the same time, should you play? Definitely try it out for yourself. It's not one I'll add to my collection. I found it an okay game. That's about it. The second game that I played last night at uh, Games Night was Machikoro. And I'll definitely talk more about that when I do my videos on Machikoro. Uh, the additional thing I will go into now, because I don't have it, is that last night we played with the Harbour expansion. I would say you do not need the Harbour expansion to play Machikoro and enjoy it, but that's why it's in my collection. However, having played with the Harbour expansion, I did very much enjoy it, 
and it is something that I would look to be getting. I found it did add to the game experience. So then the third game that I played last night was Codenames. Now, you've probably heard of Codenames, everyone has. It's a fantastic party game. I tend not to like party games. I mean, you can see behind me, no party games. Um, I tend to find they're just too short. They they just don't manage. They're not. They don't have enough depth. They're too short. They don't manage to pull me in. Codenames breaks that. Codenames achieves that. It pulls me in. I really enjoy it. Um, it's on my list to add to my collection. So, the way this game works, it's a grid of words, and you've got to give clues to your team members so that they can guess the words that correspond to your team. Now there's a card that tells you which words are going to correspond to your team, but it's always different what the words on the table are. And they've put a lot of thought into what those words are so that there are correlations there. And sometimes that's not for the best because you might find that the word that matches with one you've got falls on your enemy's side, which makes it very difficult to give a clue for the one you want because they're going to guess the opposing team, giving the opposing team points. Or even worse, they're going to guess it and it's the assassin. And that loses your game, the game immediately if you guess the assassin word. So my final thoughts on code names. I've already said I want to get this, but can two play this? Two cannot play code names. Not with the rules given anyway. I have an idea for a rules variation to allow two players. I have not tested it. If you want to test it and let me know if it works, that would be fantastic. Just put it in the comments, I'll see it. And when I eventually get this game, I'll definitely be trying it out. If anyone has code names and has any suggestion for two-player variants, please let me know as well. My idea for how to make this a two-player game is it would be a pure co-op, one team trying to guess their words. And then what you do is you make the opposing teams all assassins. So that adds a layer of depth. There's still that brain-numbing difficulty in trying to figure out the word to give to your opponent, uh, to give to your teammates to guess, and trying to gauge who your teammates are, how well you know them, what will trigger certain words in their mind. It may work. Let me know. Then the fourth and final game that I tried last night was Good Cop, Bad Cop. Now this is one I had not played before, out of a group of five, three of us hadn't. It's your typical party game, it's quick, it's simple, it's easy to learn and pick up and play. It failed to engage me. For those of you who don't know the game, you get it's a hidden, it's a hidden role game get dealt three cards and they're going to dictate whether you're a good cop or a bad cop. If you're a good cop, you want to kill the bad cops. If you're a bad cop, you want to kill the good cops. That's pretty much the game. There's some f powers thrown in with equipment that can very much change up the game and change who will win. But otherwise, that's it. Um, your turn, you'll kind of look at cards to try and figure out who's who, both on your team and on your opponent's team. Uh, can two play this game? Definitely not. It's a four-player game, and I can see no way to make this work and be good with two players. So that's my final thoughts on Game Tonight last night. Thanks for watching. Two can play that game. If you've liked what you've seen in this video, then please do subscribe and check out our other videos. And, as always, bye for now.